Welcome to my channel, American Report. Subscribe to my channel for news updates all around the world. The defining rivalry of our era is no longer about armies or oil, it's about silicon. In the 21st century the most valuable resource isn't buried underground, but etched onto microscopic wafers. The world's economic and military power now hinges on who controls the flow of these tiny, intricate chips. In a tense Washington boardroom in 2018 leaders realized America's tech dominance was slipping. The sense of urgency was palpable. Decisions made here would ripple across the globe, shaping the future of technology and geopolitics for years to come. The focus, semiconductors, the tiny chips powering everything from smartphones and laptops to advanced artificial intelligence and next-generation weapons. These chips are the invisible engines driving our digital lives, connecting billions and enabling innovation at breakneck speed. The consensus was clear, to slow China's rise, the US must control the flow of these critical components. The stakes were nothing less than the balance of global power, with technology as the new battleground. This marked a sharp break from decades of free trade, shifting to a strategy of technological containment. Suddenly the open exchange of ideas and goods was replaced by suspicion, restrictions, and a race to secure supply chains. Companies like Huawei were blacklisted, signaling a new era of confrontation. The message was unmistakable. Access to the world's most advanced technology would now be a privilege, not a right. The US and its allies held the world's most advanced chip technology, creating a choke point for China. This technological edge became a powerful lever, one that could shape the destiny of nations. A cascade of export controls followed, aiming to keep China generations behind in chip making. Every shipment, every contract, every partnership was scrutinized, as the world's supply chains were redrawn overnight. The gamble, that cutting off China's access would stall its progress, but the risks were enormous. Could the world's most interconnected industry really be contained? But this bold move would trigger consequences no one in that room could fully predict. The global economy, innovation, and even international alliances would all feel the shockwaves. The chip war had begun, and its outcome was uncertain. In this new era, the world would watch as technology, ambition, and strategy collided on a global stage. America's post-2018 strategy was clear build a fortress around its tech crown jewels. First, targeted export controls blocked China from advanced chips and manufacturing tools. The US rallied allies, like the Netherlands, Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, to join the blockade. This small yard high fence approach aimed to form a united tech front. At home, the Chips Act poured billions into new US chip factories, reversing decades of offshoring. The goal ensure the next generation of chips would be made in America, safe from global shocks. Export controls, allied coordination, and domestic investment became the three pillars of this grand strategy. The US believed its dominance in chip technology could shape China's future. The fortress was rising, and Washington waited to see if China's tech sector would falter, but the world was about to change in unexpected ways. Washington's chip policy aimed to slow China's tech ascent, especially in AI. By cutting off advanced chips, the US hoped to cripple China's AI and supercomputing ambitions. Chinese supercomputing centers were blacklisted, freezing their access to Western technology. The message, fall in line, or be left behind. The US wanted to isolate China, making global firms wary of doing business there. The plan, keep China locked out of high-value tech, enforcing a new world order. It was technological containment, a person that comes to be a major leader, a person stands for permanent betting that control over chips meant control over the future. But the strategy would have ripple effects far beyond its intended target. The chip war's first casualty? America's own tech giants. China, the world's largest chip market was suddenly off-limits to firms like NVIDIA and Intel. NVIDIA's market share in China plunged, costing billions in lost revenue. US companies lost not just sales but the fuel for future innovation. Chinese firms cut off from US chips, rushed to develop homegrown alternatives. The sanctions became a catalyst for China's domestic chip industry. The entire US tech ecosystem felt the shockwaves as supply chains were disrupted. The policy meant to protect American tech was now hurting it. The fortress was locking out not just rivals but its own champions. 
China didn't back down, it doubled down. U.S. sanctions turned chip self-sufficiency into a national mission. The government unleashed massive funding, fueling a boom in domestic chip design and manufacturing. By the mid-2020s, China's chip output soared, meeting half its own demand. Blocked from Western tech, Chinese engineers innovated with what they had, pushing older tools to new limits. The sanctions forged a more resilient, creative Chinese chip industry. Beijing also launched global talent drives, luring experts from around the world. The message, China would build its own semiconductor ecosystem no matter the cost. The US blockade became a crucible, not a cage. The dragon was wide awake and charging forward. Nowhere was the chip war's irony clearer than in the fates of NVIDIA and Huawei. These two tech giants, once on very different trajectories, found their destinies intertwined by the escalating tensions between the US and China. NVIDIA, once dominant in China's AI market, saw its position collapse after export bans. The company which had supplied the brains behind countless Chinese AI breakthroughs suddenly found itself locked out of its most lucrative market. Attempts to sell downgraded chips were hampered by red tape giving Chinese firms a protected runway. As US restrictions tightened, Nvidia's options dwindled, and Chinese companies seized the opportunity to fill the void. Meanwhile, Huawei, crippled by US sanctions, reinvented itself. Once reeling from the loss of access to American technology, the company doubled down on research and development, determined to chart its own path forward. With state backing, Huawei's HiSilicon and Semi C produced the Ascend 910C AI chip, built on Chinese tech, rivaling NVIDIA's export-grade chips. This achievement was more than just a technical milestone, it was a statement of intent from China's tech sector. The chip's success electrified China's tech sector, with officials urging firms to buy local. Suddenly, domestic innovation was not just encouraged, it was celebrated as a matter of national pride and strategic necessity. High Silicon rejoined the world's top chip designers. Its resurgence signaled that Chinese companies could compete at the highest level, even under intense international pressure. Huawei's comeback became a symbol of China's tech resurgence. The company's journey from near collapse to renewed strength inspired a new generation of Chinese engineers and entrepreneurs. The US, aiming to hobble Huawei, had instead sparked its rebirth. The sanctions, meant to stifle innovation, had the unintended effect of accelerating China's push for self-reliance. NVIDIA's retreat and Huawei's rise showed the unpredictable power of industrial policy. What was meant as a setback for China became a catalyst for transformation, reshaping the global tech landscape. The chip war was now fueling China's innovation, not stalling it. Across the country, engineers and scientists were galvanized, working tirelessly to close the technology gap. The global balance was shifting, as China's tech sector gained momentum, the world watched to see how far this new wave of innovation could go. The rules of the game had changed, and the next chapter in the chip war was just beginning. By 2025 Washington came to a sobering realization, its hardline chip policy, designed to choke off China's access to advanced semiconductors, was starting to backfire in unexpected ways. Instead of weakening China, the restrictions had only accelerated Beijing's determination to build its own tech ecosystem, and US companies were feeling the sting of lost revenue and market share. The Trump administration, recognizing the risks of pushing China toward total self-sufficiency, made a calculated pivot. Their new strategy, it was better to keep China reliant on American technology, even if it meant some compromise, than to see it become fully independent and potentially surpass the US in critical sectors. In a bold move, the US government approved exports of NVIDIA's H20 chip to China, but with a significant catch. NVIDIA was required to share 15% of all sales revenue from these chips directly with the US Treasury, ensuring that America would benefit financially from China's insatiable demand for AI hardware. This policy shift aimed to strike a delicate balance, profit from China's booming AI sector, while maintaining a degree of oversight and control over the flow of advanced technology. Wall Street and Silicon Valley watched closely, eager to see if this new approach could revive US tech fortunes. Chinese firms, still hungry for the world's best chips, responded quickly. They placed massive orders for NVIDIA's products, eager to power their next generation of AI applications and keep pace with global competitors. As a result, NVIDIA regained some lost ground in the Chinese market, 
and U.S. policymakers hoped this would restore a measure of leverage over Beijing's tech ambitions, but the damage was already done. Years of sanctions and export controls had ignited a fire under China's tech sector, making its drive for self-reliance unstoppable and fueling massive investments in domestic chip manufacturing. The lesson for Beijing was clear. Never again depend on foreign technology for critical infrastructure. The government doubled down on its commitment to homegrown innovation, pouring resources into research, talent, and new factories. While the U.S. extended an olive branch, China accepted it only as a temporary measure. The underlying strategic rivalry remained, and China's long-term goal of technological independence was unchanged. For now, Chinese companies would use U.S. chips to fuel their growth, but the future was clearly local. Every new factory and research lab brought China closer to its goal. The chip war had entered a new and more complex phase, one defined by managed dependency, fierce competition, and a race to see which nation could secure true technological sovereignty first. The chip war's legacy is a fractured digital world, the era of a single global tech ecosystem is over, now two rival spheres are emerging, one led by the US and its allies, the other by China. The US bloc runs on American hardware, software, and standards. China's sphere is built on homegrown chips, foundries, and software, expanding its reach globally. Companies must now navigate duplicated supply chains, higher costs, and incompatible standards. Geopolitical tensions rise as each side distrusts the other's technology. Security fears and regulatory barriers deepen the divide. The world is splitting into digital camps, with innovation and information flow at risk. The digital iron curtain is descending. The global tech landscape will never be the same. The chip war has reshaped the global order. The US failed to halt China's rise. Instead, it created a formidable rival with its own chip industry. Now, the world faces a new era of bipolar tech competition. The US and its allies must adapt, focusing on strategic competition and innovation. China, meanwhile, pushes to become a true tech superpower, especially in the developing world. Both sides risk costly duplication and inefficiency as they build separate systems. Mistrust runs deep, with new laws and tracking proposals highlighting the divide. China's tech still lags in some areas, but the gap is closing. The chip war isn't over, it's evolving. Navigating this fractured world will require new strategies and diplomacy. The future of global innovation and security hangs in the balance.